everybody, Christine here with another episode of the Co-Living Code. And today I have Dan Jackson over in London. He is with Urban Shared and they actually launched the end, um, actually officially launched the end of 2016, but I know you opened your first property March 2017. Currently, they actually already have 15 properties with over 150 units, which is very impressive. And also they've launched a app between all of the properties for messaging, maintenance requests. So we'll definitely dive into that too. So welcome to the show, Dan. Thank you very much, Christine. Thank you for having me. And it's over 50 units rather than 150. I wish it was 150, but um, it's only 50, which is, uh, which is still, I think, okay for where okay, we are. Okay, oh, did I say 150 by accident? Yeah, 50. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. So um, let's start with how you decided to start and get involved in the co-living. Let's start there. Okay. Um, so I've, I've been living in southwest London since the, the mid-90s. I've got two uh, kids, one's 15, one's 12. And the market in this part of, uh, in this part of London is, is expensive. Um, and there is a proliferation now of, of shared housing. Um, so my motivation is really because my children, if they're going to live near me, are going to need to live in, in shared properties. And, and quite frankly, the standard has not really changed, um, certainly in, in this part of London, since I can remember. So I'm on a mission, really, to improve the quality of shared housing, to introduce the concept of co-living into properties, initially in southwest London. And then, you know, let's see where we go from there. I love that. And then what are some different amenities and some things that set you guys apart? Okay, I mean, that, so that is a good question. I mean, I think when you talk about co-living, um, there, are, there, are, there are solutions right from sort of, you know, th those that are building their own and developing, um, you know, developing things full of amenities, right through to uh, essentially what we do, which is we repurpose existing uh, period properties. So all our properties are Edwardian and Victorian stock, um, standard normal family homes. Um, so the, in terms of where we're looking at from an amenity perspective, we're looking to simplify the whole process of, 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 of shared house living. Um, we, 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 we talked briefly, very briefly about the app. Uh, the app is where we're looking to kind of introduce the concept of community uh, simplicity and amenities. So whilst we don't provide things like swimming pools on site, obviously, you know, the average uh, Victorian property doesn't have space for that. Um, we do look to partner with local businesses and provide discounts or opportunities to leverage the, the local community in, in terms of providing the amenity. So slightly different, I think, from some of the sort of specifically build, uh, you know, build to rent type uh, things that are happening in, in other parts of the world. Perfect. And then are you guys purchasing or are you guys doing a long-term lease on the properties? So we're doing long-term lease at the moment. I mean, we've got a selection. We've got a couple of our own, um, but pr predominantly we use uh, over here in the UK a, a concept called rent to rent. So essentially we find landlords through agents or directly to landlords who are interested in a more commercial relationship with regards to their property. Um, so we will offer them a long-term lease and, and you know, guaranteed rent and, and, and full property management um, and, and essentially take the headache of being a landlord, which mm. certainly in the UK, we are being squeezed as landlords now with, with various different government initiatives. Um, and what we offer is an alternative solution to, to being a landlord. I love it. No, and I know London is, I mean, that's such a great area for co-living because it's so Brilliant. expensive and because yeah. you guys are kind of like, don't have a choice, like you said. Um, yeah, so and sure. that, that's an interesting concept, the, the kind of don't have a choice thing. I mean, I would love for it to be a choice that people were like, okay, let's do it. You know, let's, let's live in a shared home. I mean, because they're, 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 first of all, we have to acknowledge that there is a price issue in London, but if shared living was, was, a, was a choice and people chose to do it, and I think we're getting there. I mean, we've got some incredible properties that, that, that um, are part of our portfolio and we have people moving into those that don't do it because they have to, they do it because they're living in a, you know, a $2 million house um, and they're probably never going to get an opportunity to do that again um, if we get the mix of tenants right so that there is some sort of community and there is a, a feeling of, of, of creating new relationships and friends then that's a great experience you know and I would love to have been able to do that when I was you know the age of our portfolio so mid-20s to, to mid-30s. 
Okay, and that was my next question. So that's, that is, a, what's funny is across the board as a whole, the average age of co-livers is usually 25 to 35. So that's interesting that that's your exact age. Yeah, it, it uh, is. I mean, we, we've got a few that are a little older and a little younger, but broadly our sweet spot's probably 28. So you've, you're out of university for three or four years. Um, you're living in London, you're enjoying London. I mean, that's the thing. I think what, what the, the thing that we provide is, is the ability to enjoy London. So you come and live in one of our properties, you pay one monthly figure that includes um, all, the, all, the, all the utilities, gas, electricity, water, council tax, Wi-Fi and cleaning, and you enjoy London. You know, and, and I, I, again, a simple concept, but I think, it's, I think it's a growing market and I think that these products that we're providing are certainly gaining traction and, and you know, we're finding that there are, there are more people um, than we have properties. Okay, no, that's great. So you guys have more, do you guys have a waiting list then currently that you're running? We do have a waiting list. I mean, it's slightly complicated to maintain a waiting list given that um, people will find property and, and, and move in. But yeah, we have, yeah, we, we, our, our, the word of mouth marketing that, that um, is quite a challenge when you're a small business for us is it, we're gaining momentum. We're having referrals with people now. We've had some people uh, move from one property to the other people recommend to friends we've had one guy who left and then is dying to come back um, and I think that's just testament to the thing that we're trying to create which is you know we're, I, I, I super believe in customer service and customer experience and and the importance of uh, we call them I don't know if 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 we call them tenants globally but what a negative sounding word uh, we call them customers or housemates you know these, these are people that actually create all the revenue in our business. So let's start treating them like they're the most important part of our business. Dan, I'm so glad you said that. Cause we, yeah, we use the word housemates or residents. We don't ever use, tenant is also a US term, but we, right. I would never use that word. It sounds very transactional. <laughs> so yeah. um, housemates and then roommates is a very common word in the States. But what's funny is you're not sharing a room. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know why we call them roommates. Cause you're usually share, you know, sharing a house. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, no, you're exactly right about the community, and I love hearing that people come back and, you know, because they, they appreciate the experience. And do you guys have mostly people from London, or do you have people from around the world that are living in your concept? Um, I would say 90% of our tenants are from, from the UK. Um, of that 90%, probably 50 to 60% are moving to London for work. Um, and then we have a, we have a, a, a relatively significant European contingent. Um, we, I, th I don't think we've, in terms of, we've had a, we, we don't have many Americans or any Americans. Uh, we have Australians, New Zealanders, South Africans. I mean, that, there's a big kind of community of New Zealand, South Africans, Australians in London, and they love Clapham. And uh, Clapham is a, is a fantastic part of Southwest London. In fact, we've just taken on a new property today. We've been kind of up there um, getting excited about what we can do with the space and stuff. And round there, is is very much Australian, New Zealand, and, and Kiwi. So we have a, a, a fair amount of people from that part of the world. Love that. And then you said you do a monthly minimum. So is your lease term for your residents? Is it month to month? Is it a six month lease? Like, what do you ask? It's a it, the property law in the UK requires us to offer a very at minimum a six month mm. lease. Um, that's quite interesting because some of the models that, that we've looked at, certainly in terms of some of the big American co-living um, organizations, have a little bit more flexibility in, in terms of the commercial relationship with their housemates. We have to offer six-month leases. Um, and it's called an AST in the UK. Um, people can stay for less, but what we can't do is ask them to leave earlier if we need to. So it's a bit of a challenge. I mean, the, the, the law in the UK is, is very much is focused on maintaining tenants' rights, housemates' rights. And as landlords, we need to kind of make sure that we're aware of that. I mean, I would love to, to, to replicate some of the models that I've seen in the States with regards to the ability to freely move around our portfolio, which is something that we are looking to offer through our app. Um, the, 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 the logistics behind moving a tenant a housemate from a to b is is in itself quite challenging but it, when we introduce the the legality around 
moving and then looking at the, 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 the legality of the paperwork and making sure that if a, if a tenant moves, do you need to start the lease again? All those sorts of things are quite challenging. And I, I hope to see some sort of kind of acknowledgement of our business model, I think, in the future that makes things a lot easier because people want to be able to do that. You know, if you, imagine if you find a great landlord, a, 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 you know, a great property management company, you could, you could, you could lease with them you know and throughout that that 10 year period and you know we look at lifetime value of, of customer and when you start to look at a you know a housemate as a 10 year as a 10 year customer or even beyond it's a valuable proposition so we like the idea of trying to retain and trying to you know create value and 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 and, and give them the product that works for them as they as they you know potentially become home buyer, home buyers very interesting. I did not know how strict it was over there with the lease terms and switching properties. Um, you're right. It's much easier over here. <laughs> it's way easier. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think we take that for granted. So, so it's funny. So being in the, pro again, back to that, I know we're talking about both the, the actual operation of a co-living home and then the tech side um, with your app. Uh, the, because I'll tell you this much, you know, being in prop tech, London is honestly on the forefront. I think we're a little bit behind on the prop tech. Uh, stuff you guys are really pushing for that um, are you really active in that space over there are you guys just is your app live for your homes is it uh, we're, 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 we're testing now with with housemates um, so we finished the development of the app um, I'm looking at, uh, at getting more established within the prop tech world I mean as you quite rightly say there is there is a thriving prop tech community my background was in software development I was I, I was building websites in the mid 90s um, before people were really using the internet. You know, I know I don't look that old. Um, <laughs> yeah, you look young. That's great. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I, was, I was super keen and always have been on technology and finding solutions to, to make things easier and to remove friction, all those sorts of things. Um, so for me, my heart is really in how we can use the technology to, to essentially put the housemate at the center of the technology solution. Um, and I mean, as you say, prop tech in, in London is a growing and thriving community. There's all sorts of all sorts of different things going on. If you if you if you dissect the the, the kind of landscape and, and and look at what is being delivered in in the prop tech world, there's very very little that is focused on co-living housemates. How can we build something to to enhance their experience of our product? And that's where we're focused because I, I I see that as a growing market and 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 one right now without much development activity at all i mean i know you're building something um but it's people are focused people focus on on investments they, they focus on the kind of mortgage life cycle they focus on areas where i think there's probably a more obvious and and more valuable market um i think they're missing a trick personally i think that the co-living market housemates i think they're going to need technology i think we're going to this marketplace is going to grow and whoever can deliver um, you know, uh, enhanced technology solutions into that space, I think will will win. Yeah, no, and that's, you know, it blew my mind. You know, again, we have housemates from around the world that stay with us here in Los Angeles. And, you know, it's like, how can you not just take a, an app and see, okay, here's co-living homes around the world and who's living, like the bios of who's living in those homes. You know, I mean, because honestly, usually it's who's living in the home. It's not the home itself, right? We've lived yeah. in some really nice houses, but we've lived in some not so great. And honestly, it was the people living in that home that we got to grow alongside of and learn from. And um, if we could see bios and just say, okay, great. Like, I want to jump to London for the month of January. Here's availability. Boom, boom, boom. Um, you know, credit check, yeah. everything just didn't, I don't, I mean, there's no reason why we can't be done. So I think no. I was waiting for somebody else to build it. <laughs> And now, yeah, I mean, we're doing it, but, uh, and just That's great. the community aspect, right? So can you, yeah. can you easily message or reach out to people at a different co-living home and check, you say, Hey, how's your experience? You know, and just build that ecosystem, yeah. that infrastructure. So, yeah. No, I think, I think there is so, there's so many cool ideas, aren't there? I mean, we, we focused on, um, four or five key pieces of functionality in the app. Um, we have uh, WhatsApp groups for every house. So what we've done is we've, we've, we've built that into the, into the app and we've made messaging context sensitive. So for example, our WhatsApp groups at the moment, if you look through one of our houses, it includes maintenance issues, it includes notifications of visits, it includes requests for meter reads, 
it includes everything and, and actually deciphering it and reading through it and figuring out what we've done and who's respond is quite complicated. So we've made, we've made messaging context sensitive. So you, you've got an area where you can report a maintenance problem um, and, and our, the back end of the, 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 the platform enables us to categorize it and monitor the resolution of that particular incident in a, in a, in a reportable way. And we, I then love we, that. And, and I, I, that, that, that's, uh, we, you know, we had some conversation with people saying, oh, you're not just building WhatsApp within your own, with a, within your own platform. Um, but we now have all the data, or we will have all the data of all the communications that we have with our tenants. We'll be able to identify properties that are more or less cost effective to operate because we'll know how many maintenance items are coming in. We'll know which of our contractors are delivering um, value and, and responding to problems quicker. And whilst I said initially that our app is really focused on the housemate, those sorts of pieces of functionality, I mean, the, 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 the housemate is really benefiting, but so is you know, our landlords and so are we as a business. So we're really understanding how to, essentially how to, how to manage more effectively, and then we can scale. So the app has got you know, a number of different things that I think are gonna help both us and tenants, housemates, and landlords. I love, no, and you guys are scaling quickly already without, so imagine now with, with this tool, with the app, you know, yeah, to be able to yeah. do that and the reporting, you're right. Cause then you could track like, okay, which, which house has the most maintenance requests, which one, you know, you'll yeah. have that data and the data is really important. Yeah. The data is super important. Super I important. love it. So what, so Dan, tell me, I always ask everybody on my show this question, what's your very favorite part about the co-living industry, about running a co-living concept? Well, that's a great, I'm just excited by the idea of, um, I have a vision every time I go and look at a property, I, I think, will my daughter, could I make this a place that my daughter would like to live? What kind of things could we do to really make this a, you know, a memorable experience? I, I didn't have a bad sharing experience, but it's not memorable. So what could we do to make this cool? Um, and I, I, like, I like the idea of innovating. I like the idea of, of, of reducing friction to, to do things in a more efficient way. Um, but actually one of the pieces of the business that, that, that I really enjoy doing is I love showing, I love doing viewings actually. You know, we, you know there's myself and we have, you know, uh, there's just the two of us in the business at the moment. And viewings for me are, it's enjoyable because we can see that, that and, and to be fair, some housemates, potential housemates might just be saying this, but when we show people around, they always say, this is the best house we've seen. Um, and I'm not bragging, you know, I'm, that, that's what people say. And, and I show them the app and I show them the things that we're doing and I explain the things that we're trying to do. And, and I, I think that we are moving the needle on, on shared housing in Southwest London. There are a couple of other companies doing exactly what we're doing in exactly the same space. Um, but I think we're making a difference. And I, I, like, I like the idea of being able to do that, you know. I love that. So, so when is your, I'm trying to get out to London finally, oh, yeah. but I'm wondering when your weather is going <laughs> like, to, would it be March? I'm guessing probably wait till March. Uh, March. Uh, mm, no, maybe, maybe April, May, I think when Ooh. it's, uh, you know, okay. yeah. <laughs> no, cause you guys, I mean, again, I just really, I love what you guys are doing out there and you know, I travel a lot, but I haven't been, I haven't spent time in London yet. So right. yeah, like it'll be right. sooner than later, but I, I got to pre mentally prepare. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to go in the winter time. Uh, <laughs> but no, yeah, that's just fabulous. Like I love everything you guys are doing um, and just how you think about, you know, creating that experience uh, for people and creating an amazing living environment and that you use, you know, your daughter, like that's the perfect customer avatar, right? Of like, yeah. and, and that was my next question. So is it male, female? What's the split on male and females? Um, that's a good question. It's probably um, it's probably close to fifty fifty. I mean, what we what we try and do is with our we've got properties from two bedrooms all the way up to six bedrooms, and what we try and do when we get above four bedrooms is is make sure that there's a fifty fifty split. So if we have a a male housemate leave, we'll always try and replace with another male. I think it's important that we maintain the kind of balance in properties. So it's probably close to fifty fifty. Oh, that's great. Okay. I'm hearing more and more of that lately, which is great. Okay. That's good. Yeah. We, we, we have had, we, we, we have some interesting viewings where um, we might have, for example, a, a female flatmate that feels uncomfortable with sharing with males. Um, 
and invariably that might mean that she, she, she's not ideal for our environments. But I, I, we, we, we sometimes talk the idea of an all-female house, an all-male house. We've often considered the idea of maybe a, a house of, of people that work in, in fintech. Um, so that there is, that they have an immediately a, a, a connection, and those sorts of th th those sorts of uh, ideas are, are things that we're we're toying with. But right now, we find that houses, people find houses, people who want to live in Clapham, all tend to be of, of the same age in the same industries. People who want to live in in balance, similar. Um, so we we find that actually the inquiries that we get are almost fifty fifty in terms of kind of the male female ratio at the moment. Interesting. Okay, good. Okay, no, that's that's very interesting. So it's not necessarily themed in any of the homes um, by yes. career or anything. Okay, no, that's great. And then, so this is my final question. The question I ask everybody too is, where Dan do you see co living as an industry going in the future? Uh, I think that it's it's growing um, without a shadow of a doubt. We look at our metrics and 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 see what some some big organisations are predicting. Um, in terms of you know the cities of the future i think that um if we could fast forward to 10 or 15 years time i think co-living would be a will will be a, a a proper thing i think we'll probably find that there will be some some big players who whether it whether it be hoteliers or 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 um different and, and large players in property i think they'll really embrace the idea of of, of co-living i think legislation will have to change in order to accommodate and make it easy to do that i think it'll become much more acceptable than than it ever has done um and uh, you know looking at the statistics and, and looking at the the property market in london it's an obvious solution to an increasingly you know difficult to solve problem we have more people than properties um the mayor of london who actually just lives down the road from me his children go to my, my kids school um he talks about um, dense living. He talks about building um, high rises, you know, blocks of flats, which we built in the 60s in London. Um, that takes huge amounts of planning. That takes, you know, huge amounts of investment and it takes a lot of time. We can, we can find a, a, a Victorian or a, an Edwardian property and, and create five homes within a week or within a month for five people that want to be able to live like that. Um, so, I think market forces are only pointing toward, you know, an increased acceptance and an, an, an increased um, volume of, of, of shared homes. And co-living is the way that those homes, I think, will um, essentially distinguish themselves from shared homes of today, which don't really have much of a community and don't really think about customer experience and, and kind of a slightly different concept to, to you know, co-living itself. Love that. Love that answer. So yes, definitely, Dan, thank you so much for this interview. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice to, nice to speak to you. No, same here. And definitely I will have all your contact information. People can check out Urban Shared. Your website's beautiful. Love your Instagram. Love what you guys are doing. And then I will definitely come visit soon. You're more than welcome. So okay. we'll, we'll definitely meet up, have a coffee. Sounds good, Dan. Thanks again. Thank you very much. Bye.